Hey guys, uh, today I'm here with my colleague and friend, Joe. Hello. Uh, Joe is just been promoted and she's one of the best booksellers I know. And uh, today I just wanted to talk to her about everything she loves about being a bookseller and also get into some of her favorite books. Uh, so let's begin. Joe. Hello, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you enjoy about being a bookseller? Um, so, book selling is the job I, I've done in my life that I've most enjoyed, and that's why I continue to do it. I enjoy book selling because at the very heart of it is um, talking to other people, and I do think there's altruism in it. Yeah. Even if it's a business, it's a business that gives literacy to people, that talks to people, and that is at the heart of most people's communities. So. It's a bit cheesy, but I have a real kind of, like, it's a beautiful thing. Wow, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As booksellers, we're saving the world. <laughs> I, I do think we're selling, especially with children's book selling, I think it makes a massive difference to people's lives. Oh my God. And I've got some gen, genuine feelings on it. I believe in total inclusive, inclusivity, is that the yeah. word? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no snobbery. If you're reading, you're reading. And yeah. that's the most important thing I to totally me. I totally agree with yeah. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want people to feel welcome. And I want people to tell me about what they're reading um, because even if it's not for me, it's for someone. And I think that's the whole point of it. And I, yeah. do, I do believe reading changes the world and changes people's lives. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Now I feel better. Now, like, oh, man, yeah, I wish I could talk about books that way. <laughs> that way. Yeah. <laughs> We're the best. <laughs> we are. We are. We are the best. Okay. So, so um, not only uh, Joe is also is a specialist in pretty much everything in the shop of adult fiction, children's fiction but you started as a children's uh bookseller it's, right? it's quite funny actually because it was kind of foisted onto me children's uh, bookselling because okay. there is an element of it being like um a bear pit at times. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not everyone's favorite section that's um, that's for sure so although my, my childhood reading saved me yeah um i was initially kind of frightened about being a kid's bookseller really why were you frightened? um because I was an adult in a children's world initially, yeah. kind of thing, which I've, I've totally regressed and gone back to childhood <laughs> now. Oh no, I feel uh, that way too. And then now that I'm getting into kids, kids books of YA, yeah. it's total like, I just can't even deal with the adult world. Like, no, it's Peter Pan syndrome. No, I totally agree with you. Um, and I've learned so much um, and working with children and parents and schools it's just changed me completely. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's just like a kind of really... <laughs> um, yeah, and children's books at the moment are so interesting and so yeah. exciting. It's Is it the third golden age? Is that what we call it now? The third, the third gold, golden age of, of children's, children's fiction. Yeah, yeah. And that, that goes well with uh, the Lie Tree just winning Absolutely. Uh, the um, Gosta Book Award. Which is amazing. Yeah. 2016 is going to be an amazing year for children's books because people are finally starting to realise that they're valid, amazing forms of yeah. uh, art, culture, entertainment, and yay, Francis, we love you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, okay, so do you want to show me some of your favorite books? I got Joe to pick out some of her favorite books. <laughs> she will speak to, to me about them, and uh, I will hold them up. <laughs> so my favorite medium of, of any kind of book is books and pictures, um, because that's what kind of appeals to me most. That's how... I start to exist in the world of books, I think. And I wanted to choose this one first because this is quite an interesting curio that you might not have come across. This was actually created through a Kickstarter fund and it's called Hair by Zoe Greaves. And not only is it a picture book about hair, it's also an uncanny, mystical, wonderful, beautifully illustrated book about folklore and culture of hairs. It's got stunning end paper. Look, you've got cabbages Ooh, as end paper. <laughs> this is nice. Um, and this is one of the rare instances. It's really hard to break into children's book selling and quality control is always an issue. But look at this. This is stunning. You start off with a hair in a graveyard. He is oh coming. My God. Which is like an MR James. He is coming. <laughs> oh, hair is coming this way. Call him Hair King. Oh um, it's, ju it's just a beautiful book. It should really sit in your natural history sections in um, your bookshop. It's just, yeah, it's gorgeous. And at the back, this is the, the thing I love most about this book. At the um, back. Which you, page? you can restore it. It's. Don't, don't ruin it, Jacob. <laughs> There's a glossary of hair facts. Oh wow! Um, and actually, 
actually, I was thinking about this. I've never seen a hair in real life. Um, Do there's so, hairs yeah, in England? There are hairs in England, yeah. And like I, hairs, yeah. What's the difference between a hair and a rabbit? They're bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're more mysterious. <laughs> uh, they're not as cute. Um, so it's like hairs in literature, um, like hairs in uh, whether they're lucky to me. It's just really unusual book um, and I just think it's a beautiful thing and that's why I wanted to show you because I don't think it's something you'll see very often oh, wow. and I would really like to support Zoe Greaves because I just think it's an amazing thing uh, yeah that's Perfect. the first one that's hair my second one is um, just hilarious I love this book um, I think when you're reading to children it's really important to have rhythm and yeah. it's really important to have pace and humour, um, and this book does it all. It's called Oi Frog by Kez Gray and Jim Field. Um, Jim Field has also illustrated um, a book called Cats Ahoy, um, which <laughs> won the Roll <laughs> Dial of Smarties Prize four or five years ago, I think. And it's just hilarious. Now, first things first, let's look at the end papers again. Hang on. Because <laughs> this time it's frogs. Oh my uh, God. Not cabbages, frogs. Um, and the general theme about all these books I'm talking about today is a kind of uh, kind of questioning everything, um, looking at authority and what it means. <laughs> nice. And the, the crux of this book is about Frog being told to sit on a log, and he's not so sure he wants to sit on a log kind of thing. <laughs> so um, he's going to question this, and it's just got the most amazing rhyming. Uh, my favourite, well, I love the expression on it's a hair again. The expression on the hare's face, because it says here, hares sit on chairs, says the very didactic cat. Um, the hare looks like he's been caught doing something really bad. <laughs> um, but my favourite rhyme in the whole of the book is towards the end, when Frog asks, what about puffins? And the cat says, puffins sit on muffins. Um, <laughs> there's a wonderful illustration of puffins sitting on muffins. Um, so I love this book. I think it's got an amazing story time appeal. Um, it's bright, it's colourful, it's funny, and yeah, oi frog. Oi frog, <laughs> woohoo! Uh, the third one is one of the more weirder books that, yet again, I, you might not have seen. Um, it's a board book, which means toddlers can fling it around, chew it up, and it will survive, which is <laughs> always a bonus, so I'm a big fan of board books. Um, now, I'm going to pronounce the names of the authors badly. It's uh, Ramadier and Bourgeau, I think. Oh, okay. And it's published by Gecko Press. And Gecko Press are a really great publisher. They do really beautiful, inclusive, and bizarre children's books. Um, another one published by them, which you should check out, it's called, uh, I think it's Death, Duck, the Tulip and Me. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay, but this one is great because it's an interactive book. Um, basically, as you read it, it tells you what to do. So it starts off with a picture of the mean wolf. Um, and it says he's getting closer quick turn the page and then he's getting Dude. slightly closer <laughs> oh no this he's, is terrifying he's very very close quick tilt the book to the right and turn the page <gasps> and you turn it and then it's he's slipping yes tip the book and turn the page and basically uh, oh, wow. that is the whole gist of this book you are interacting with it that is really you are being clever. terrified by a very menacing wolf <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it's just fantastic I absolutely love it um, I think children will really enjoy this book. <laughs> Perfect. Going back to um, questioning authority, um, anarchy and inclusivity. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is my absolute favourite book from last year. This is Leo, A Ghost Story by Mac Barnett. Now Mac Barnett is, he's just an amazing man. He's done some amazing TED Talks. Um, He's hilarious. He's been involved with Dave Eggers, uh, McSweeney, McSweeney's community project, um, mentoring children in the community behind the facade of a shop that sells pirate uh, materials. Um, it's, you should just look up Matt Barnett. He is funny and wonderful. Leo, which is illustrated by Christian Robinson, who um, has just won an award, I think, in America. It's either the Newbury Medal or the Caldecott for um, one of his picture books. Um, he, they're just so lovely and he's um christian robinson has an amazing website you should visit as well basically leo i'm gonna hand it to jacob <laughs> sorry no you can't have it uh leo is a ghost um and leo starts his life just being a ghost you know he's always been a ghost he's, he's all right he's quite lonely he's in his house he's a ghost but then one day i don't know if we can get to it and look at you want to get to it, it. Yeah, let's i'll hand it, it back to you, uh, you yeah got it. So there he is on his own he's reading Good man. Um, <laughs> I, 
he's quite lonely but he's quite content um yeah one day a family moves in and leo's like brilliant this is great uh, i'm gonna have some friends and he tries to bring them tea oh no yeah but all the family see is a floating tray with tea on and they're just like ah <laughs> they don't understand they don't them. like it they don't they like woo uh so leo's a bit like better find somewhere else to live um so I don't want to ruin too much of the story. Yeah, those spoil. But he goes spoiler wandering. Alert. He goes spoilers. <laughs> he goes wandering, um, and he finds a little girl to be his friend. Um, she, however, doesn't realise Leo's a ghost. She thinks he's an imaginary friend, and then the story oh. becomes an issue about Leo being too scared to tell her he's a ghost. <laughs> like, this is a real conflict. I know, oh my god! Um, and so it's a real story about identity and acceptance. And it sounds amazing. I won't ruin the ending, but um, it's just stunning. It's published by Chronicle. Chronicle are an American publisher. Uh, they're one of my favourite children's uh, publishers. They also did this wonderful book, which is a kids picture book about the life of Josephine Baker which is also illustrated by Christian Robinson and um, yeah I just absolutely adore them <laughs> okay so this um, came out about two years ago this is Mr Tiger Goes Wild by Peter Brown who was another American um, illustrator author this is uh, I, I can't kind of express how much I love this book because it's about non-conformity and it's about finding yourself, being yourself, and letting other people accept you. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my um, God. So, Mr. Tiger Goes Wild. Uh, some brick wall end paper. Ooh, <laughs> bricks, cabbages, Ooh. hairs, um, frogs. So, good stuff. this is Mr. Tiger's world when we meet him. It's quite grey, it's very upright, and, you know, stiff. Looks Victorian. Uh, and, and yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Tiger is wearing a stovepipe hat, which I love. Uh, so, um, and you just kind of meet him going about his day-to-day -day business, and it's yeah. all very stoic, stiff upper lip. <laughs> Mr. Tiger's a bit like, well, you know, he kind of has a moment. Uh, How grim. <laughs> a, a moment of epiphany, I think, yeah. at this exact point, where he kind of thinks, eh, I want to do something else. So during this moment of epiphany, uh, he has a think, and then if we turn to the next page, Mr. Tiger <laughs> decides he's going to walk on all fours, um, and this is when chaos erupts in Mr. Tiger's um, town, because this is shocking behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't see yeah. what's happening. He's walking on all fours. Oh my yeah, god. He's on okay. All four, yeah. Oh wow. So, um, and the basic gist of this story is Mr. Tiger goes off to find himself. Um, oh wow. Uh, meanwhile, the village are all disgusted at the thought that someone would dare to go wild and be themselves. Um, wow. So Mr. Tiger goes away for a while, and I think there's some lovely pictures here of him being free in the wild. Uh, look at that. Oh, nice. No stovepipe hat for Mr. Tiger. Um, but he starts to get a bit lonely um, in the wilderness. So gorgeous. Yeah, oh <laughs> Um, and after he's done with going completely wild, uh, he kind of wants to go home again. Um, he starts to feel a bit sad. And when he goes home, tentatively, <laughs> he's welcomed. Oh, um, I don't really want to. So yeah, I don't want to ruin the book. But basically, there's a seismic change um, from uh, Mr. Tiger's kind of. Uh, so he changes the authority. He does. And Breaks down the system. Yeah. I don't, I don't I won't I won't ruin it for you but um it's just fantastic um, oh wow yeah, yeah. Um, so cool. I think this is great for any children that are struggling um with fitting in at school because this is oh, like to run you don't like have to fit in you can just be your beautiful be self be yourself yeah okay uh, okay I just thought I'd go with the classic for the last one this is um this is like my favorite parenting manual basically <laughs> oh really uh, not now Bernard this is probably 30 years old this was around when I was a kid um, this is a really simple story about a young boy who tries to talk to his parents constantly about a monster following him and his oh parents respond to him by ignoring him and uh, reiterating the phrase, not now Bernard. Um, and poor Bernard is just trying to tell them there's a monster after him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, holy cow, this is a terrifying yeah, monster. But they, right they don't want to know. Um, but the, the best thing about this book, um, and it's very dark, and I, ch I think children really embrace dark issues, is uh, 
the monster eats Bernard at one point. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, um, which I will get to. Yeah. The monster ate Bernard up every bit. Then the monster went indoors. <laughs> oh my god. Um, what's amazing about this book is the parents still don't realise that oh no. Bernard has been eaten and they treat the, the monster as Bernard. Um, and continue to say, not now, Bernard. And I, is, I just think it's a wonderful cautionary tale about is listening to your child, paying them attention, um, especially when they're trying to tell you there's a monster in the garden trying to eat them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but my favourite thing about the book is the end page where the mother has tucked the monster up in bed and given him some hot chocolate. And he's just lying there bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, but I'm a monster, said the monster. And the mother says, not now, Bernard. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's by David McKee, who is famous over here for Mr. Ben and Elmer, which is another book which is about inclusivity. Um, and it's published by Anderson Press. And these are just fantastic books. I think every grown-up and child should read. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you so it's much, okay. Joe, for talking to me. I'm going to have to pick some of them, maybe all of them up, and okay. start a picture book library, because this is the sense. Like, I'm so psyched to read these books cool. now. So thank you so much for doing this uh, doing this video. And, and I hope you guys uh, really uh, <laughs> I hope you guys really enjoyed this video about uh, children's books. So if you... Um, if you like this video, please like it, and if you really like this video, please subscribe. Um, if you like the look of any of these books, uh, please stop by at Watersons Trafalgar Square and have a perusal and say hello to me or Joe. Bye. <laughs>